In this section, we're going to solve some triangles using our second definition for the trigonometric functions. But before we do, we need to talk about significant figures. So for significant digits, we count all the digits from left to right, starting with the first non-zero digit on the left. So for uh, this number right here, this has two significant digits because we start with the leftmost digit and then we count all the non-zero digits from there on. So this number has two significant digits. This number has three significant digits. This number, I start with the 8, and then I go 1, 2, 3. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4 significant digits. This number has 3 significant digits. This number has 3 significant digits. And this number has 3 significant digits. That's if we don't know anything else about the numbers, that is, where they came from, or anything like this. If this number right here, if we knew that it had been rounded to the nearest 100, then we would know it had one significant digit. But in this case right here, we don't know anything else about the number. We're going to assume it has um, three significant digits. When we talk about the relationship between the sides in a triangle and the angles in the triangle, we use this. If the sides have two significant digits, then we're going to round our angles to the nearest degree. If the sides in a triangle have three significant digits, then we want to work with our angles to the nearest 10 minutes or one-tenth of a degree. And four significant digits on the sides will work for the, to the nearest minute or the nearest one-hundredth of a degree, so the closest hundredth. So that's what we, uh, when we talk about significant digits, this is what we mean right here. Now what we want to do is go to the board and work some problems that involve triangles. We're going to assume that triangle ABC is a right triangle with angle C equal 90 degrees. Now that's going to be the case for all the problems that we're going to work in this section right here. So if triangle ABC is a right triangle and angle A is 42 degrees and side C is 15 feet, can we find the length of side A? I'm going to begin by drawing a little triangle here that I'm just going to use for reference. I'm going to label that angle A, that B, and this C. Now let's fill in the information that we're given, 42 degrees for angle A. So I'll fill this in, 42 degrees. Side C is 15 feet. I'll fill that in. And then what I'm looking for is the length of side A. So side A is right over here. Now what trigonometric function do I have that relates angle A, side A, and side C? The answer is the sine of 42 degrees will be equal to the side opposite, which is A, divided by 15. Multiply both sides of this equation by 15, and I end up with A is equal to 15 times the sine of 42 degrees. I'll work that out on a calculator, and I end up with, let's see, 15 times about 0.6691. That's going to come out to two significant digits, 10 feet. So I need to round the two significant digits because that's what I have here on the sides. The side, this side right here is given with two significant digits, so I need to round my answer for side A to two significant digits. I look for the trigonometric relationship that relates this angle, this side, and this side. In this case, with this angle, this side is opposite, and this side is the hypotenuse. That must be the sine function. So the sine of 42 degrees is A divided by 15. Multiply both sides of this equation by 15, and I get A equals 15 sine 42. Now, this is a calculator problem. I find the sine of 42 degrees, I multiply that by 15, and then I round to two significant digits. That gives me 10 feet. So um, that's how we solve for one of the sides in a triangle. Given that information, let's try another one of these problems. This time, angle A is 34 degrees. Side A is 22 meters. Let's find side C. Again, I'm going to draw a triangle that I can label just for reference so I have something to look at. I'll call that angle A, that will be angle B, and of course that's angle C, the right angle. Angle A is 34 degrees, so let's fill that in, 34 degrees. Side A is 22 meters, so there we have 22 meters right there. And then um, I want to find the length of side C, so I'll use my different color here for side C. That's this. So again, here I have angle A, the side opposite, and the hypotenuse. I'm looking for the hypotenuse, I'm given the side opposite, and I'm given angle A. What trigonometric re, uh, ratio or function relates to those? Again, it's the sine function. So I have this. The sine of 34 degrees is equal to 22 divided by C. Sine 34 is equal to 22 divided by C. Now I need to solve this equation for C. I'm going to start by multiplying both sides by C. That'll get C out of the denominator here. 
I'll have C sine 34. I divide both sides by sine 34, and I'll have C is equal to 22 divided by sine 34. Whatever this number comes out to be, it's just a number. So I treat it the same way I would any number when solving an equation in algebra. So I multiply both sides by C, divide both sides by sine 34, and I end up with C is equal to 22 divided by the sine of 34 degrees. So the sine of 34 degrees, I'll find that on the calculator, divide that into 22, and I believe that this one comes out C equal 39 meters when I round to two significant digits because that's what I have for this side right here, two significant digits, the nearest angle right here, so I'm going to round this to 39 meters. Again, this is a calculator problem right here, 22 divided by the sine of 34 degrees. Whatever way you can do that on your calculator, you need to be able to do it so you come out with a rounded answer of 39 meters. Here's our next problem. This time B is equal to 55.33 degrees. Side B is 12.34 yards. Let's find the length of side A. Here's my reference triangle right here. That's A. That's B. There's my right angle C. Angle B is 55.33 degrees. So 55.33 degrees for angle B. Side B is 12.34. 12.34. Side B, remember, is the side that's opposite angle B. Now I'm looking for the length of side A. I'll fill that in in red. I want the length of side A. So here I have angle B. I have the side opposite angle B, and, I have the side, and I'm looking for the side adjacent to angle B. So what trigonometric ratio will relate B, the side opposite, and the side adjacent? And the answer is the tangent. So the tangent of 55.33 degrees is equal to 12.34, the side opposite, divided by the side adjacent. So the tangent of 55.33 is 12.34 divided by A. Notice also here I have four significant digits, and my angles have been rounded to the nearest hundredth of a degree, so two digits past the decimal point for my angles. Okay, I have this equation. I need to solve it for A. I'll multiply both sides by A. Then I'll divide both sides by 55.33 degrees, or I should say tangent 55.33. I end up with A is equal to 12.34 divided by tangent 55.33 degrees. Now I'll work that out to the nearest, uh, well, to four significant digits. I do that division, and I end up with 8.535, 8.535 yards. And see, I round to the nearest uh, tenth, hundred thousandth, because I need four significant digits in my answer right here, because this side is given with four significant digits. So it's not the, the number, of decimal, number of places past the decimal point that's an important, it's the number of significant digits. So again, I'm given a little different information right here. I look for the trigonometric ratio that relates the things I'm given and the thing I'm asked for, and then I set up an equation, solve the equation for whatever variable is there, and then I end up with something to do on the calculator, and that comes out 8.535 yards in this case. I want to do a couple more problems. Here's the next one. Here we're given side B is 6.7 meters, side C is 7.7 .7 meters. Let's find angle A. I'm going to draw in my reference triangle here. There's my right angle C. That will be A. That's B. Let's see. Side B is 6.7 meters. Side C is 7.7 .7 meters. And now I'm looking for angle A. So I want to find the measure of this angle right here. So what trigonometric function relates this angle, the side adjacent, and the hypotenuse? That will be the cosine. So I'm going to say the cosine of angle A will be equal to 6.7 divided by 7.7. So 6.7 divided by 7.7, if I do that arithmetic, I end up with 0 0.8701 approximately. Now I use my inverse cosine button, and this implies that A is approximately equal to 29, and on my calculator I get 5, 2, 6 degrees. Okay, I have two significant digits in my sides right here, so I need to round my angle to the nearest degree. So that will be 30 degrees to the nearest degree. So angle A comes out to be 30 degrees to the nearest degree if the adjacent side is 6.7 and the hypotenuse is 7.7. .7.
So again, with the information that I'm given and what I'm asked to find, I look for a trigonometric ratio that relates those. In this case, it's the cosine of this angle is this divided by this. I end up with 0.8701. Use my inverse cosine button on my calculator to get A is 29.526. I need to round to two significant digits here, or to, to, I should say to the nearest degree from my angle. So I do that, I end up with 30 degrees. One more problem. In this case, I have uh, angle B is equal to 26 degrees 30 minutes, and side B is 324 millimeters. Find everything else, okay? Well, let's draw in a triangle here for reference. There's my right angle. Let's call that A. That will be B, and of course, that's C. Angle B is 26 degrees 30 minutes. So 26 degrees 30 minutes for angle B. Side B is 324. So I need to find angle A, I need to find side A, and I need to find side C. Let's find angle A first. To find angle A, I'll use the fact that A and B are complementary angles. So angle A will be equal to 90 degrees, subtract 26 degrees, 30 minutes. So when I do that subtraction, I'm going to end up with 63 degrees, 30 minutes. So angle A is 63 degrees, 30 minutes. Let's just check this real quick. 30 and 30 is 60, so that's one degree. And then 26 and 63 is going to be 89, plus that one, that will be 90. So sure enough, that gives me angle A, 63 degrees, 30 minutes. Now let's find side A. To find side A, I'm going to use, uh, let's see, I can use angle A or I can use angle B. I can use angle A and the fact that the sine of A, well, let's see, let's use tangent. So how about the tangent of 63 degrees, how about instead of that 63.5 degrees is equal to A divided by 324. So the tangent of this angle is this side divided by this. And I changed, instead of degrees and minutes, I changed to decimal degrees so that I can use my calculator here. Multiply both sides by 324, and I end up with A is equal to 324 tangent 63.5 degrees. And now I worked that out on the calculator, and to the nearest, uh, let's see, what do I got? Three significant digits, that comes out 650. A is equal to 650. And what did I have up here? Millimeters, so millimeters. Let's make sure that that looks like a zero. A is equal to 650 millimeters. So uh, see, I've rounded this to 650 millimeters because I wanted three significant digits. And when it rounds, it rounds to 650. Now, next, let's find side C. I want to find side C. OK, that's this side right here. I have A. I have this. Uh, why don't we try a cosine relationship here? Let's say. How about if we say cosine of 63.5 degrees is equal to 324 divided by side C. I could use the Pythagorean theorem, too, if I want 324 squared plus 650 squared. That's come out to be C. But let's try this trigonometric relationship. Multiply both sides by C, divide both sides by cosine. I end up with C is equal to 324 divided by cosine 63.5. So 324 divided by cosine 63.5. And that comes out to be 726 millimeters if I round to three significant digits. Now, it's possible that if you do this problem a little using a little different method, you could get numbers that are different in this last digit right here. It just depends. Like I say, once we have side A and side B, after this step right here, we could find side C using the Pythagorean theorem. And I don't know, maybe that digit would come out a little bit differently. I chose to use a cosine relationship right here. Somebody else might have chose to use, uh, might decide to use angle B and a sine relationship or something like that. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to proceed when we solve these triangles. This is one method right here. Um, using a little bit different method, you may end up with some digits that are a little different here in the last place. But um, if, they're, if they're only off by one or two in this last place, then you know that the, that the method that you're using is correct. So this is an important part of trigonometry, knowing how to find missing parts of right triangles 
using our second definition for the six trigonometric functions.